Well, good morning and welcome to the thought for the day from the Lady Grove Church. Today I thought I would talk about um, something I suppose that's been on my mind right since the beginning of uh, the lockdown. Um, last summer when we were in the Derbyshire Peaks, we decided to visit the village of, I think it's Eim, or it might be Eim, it's E-Y-A-M, uh, in the Derbyshire Peaks. It's a place that I'd really wanted to see for the last three years, ever since I read a little guidebook about the place uh, that was in the, the farmhouse where we, where we stayed. And in case you don't know, um, I'll call it I'm from now on, uh, has probably got one claim to fame. And it's uh, about something that happened back in the, um, back in the Renaissance period, 16... 65 it all started. Um, it's, it's about um, September, I think it was, 65, when uh, a man in the village received a delivery of cloth from London. The cloth was damp and so his assistant uh, hung it up in front of the fire to, to dry out and in doing so enlivened the fleas that were in the cloth and unbeknown to them the fleas carried the bubonic plague and gradually the plague spread and in the end it killed 260 people in that village which we're not entirely sure what the population was. There's estimations anywhere between 350 and 800. But what we can say is that they killed a good 25% at least of the, of the population. The thing that makes I'm famous is the fact that the village went into lockdown it stopped the plague spreading from that village. It could have easily got to Sheffield and other larger towns, but the people decided to stay and not to leave and not to spread. And the thing that I suppose I want to focus on is, is how that came about, because it was after the first few deaths that the parish priest realised something was up and that something needed to be done. He was a guy by the name of William Mompesson and he had only been um, the parish priest there since April 64 and he was not very popular. Not for anything that he had done so much but because his predecessor, a guy by the name of Thomas Stanley, had been kicked out by the diocese and, and William had been put in his place against the desires of the population of that village. Thomas Stanley, a Puritan, had refused to accept the Book of Common Prayer for services, the Book of Common Prayer which is still in use in the Church of England today. He didn't like it, coming from a puritanical background, and nor did the congregation. But it was laid down in law that that was the, um, the book that had to be used for all forms of worship. And so by refusing, he was kicked out by the diocese. And, obviously he was quite upset about that, he decided to simply live on the edge of the village in sort of, in a soul, I dare say. And so when William Mompesson decided that something had to be done, and he was thinking quarantine seemed to be the most obvious thing to do, he needed to convince the villagers that the best thing was for them to die, or to risk dying. And how was he going to do that when they didn't like him and they wouldn't listen to him? And so he went to Thomas Stanley and he explained his concerns and his desires. And amazingly, Thomas, despite his disagreement with the Church of England, 
And despite his anger, probably, that he had been kicked out by this, by the diocese, and this upstart had been put in his place, Thomas accepted. And so the two of them called a meeting and stood side by side and told the villagers that the best way forward was to stay and risk their own livelihoods for the sake of the country. And it just got me thinking about a very simple psalm. Psalm 133. How wonderful it is, how pleasant, when brothers live together in harmony. For harmony is as precious as the fragrant anointing oil that was poured over Aaron's head, that ran down his beard and onto the border of his robe. Harmony is as refreshing as the dew from Mount Hermon that falls on the mountains of Zion. And the Lord has pronounced his blessing, even life forevermore. Interesting last line there, life forevermore, when they were all facing death. But the psalmist writes how beautiful harmony is. Like oil running down a beard. And of course, there were still disagreements between Montpesson and Stanley. Their views of the Book of Common Prayer and their views of how to do the Christian faith didn't change. But they saw that they needed to come together. Needed to come together for the greater good. And look at the world today. We're battling this virus. We're battling other issues as well. But we don't seem to manage to do it very often as a united people. We like to point the fingers. It's their fault. They're to blame. Or we want to do our way of solving the problem rather than coming together and saying, let's work at this together. Let's use the greatest minds in all these different organisations, in all these different political parties. It's not as though one political party or one organisation has a monopoly in common sense and brains and ideas. Things like the United Nations, the World Health Organisation, are brilliant because the idea, at least, is the coming together of people from all over the world to sort out issues. Maybe we've got a lot to learn from the likes of the people of I am. And certainly we've got a lot to learn with God's guidance that harmony is beautiful. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for the example of the people of I am. We thank you that there was, there was no positive thing for them really. It wasn't as though lockdown was going to be much better for them. It was just going to be much better for the country. Thank you for their willingness as a whole population to, to make that sacrifice to protect the people living around them. And Lord, we thank you that you long to bring harmony that Christ died on the cross for all of us so that there would be no division, that we would all need his death and resurrection and your forgiveness. Thank you that you send your Holy Spirit to live amongst us, to live within us, to draw us closer to one another. Lord, we pray for our world that so often seems so fragmented and our countries, where political parties and different belief systems get in the way of effectively dealing with the issues that this world faces. 
Lord, we thank you that you've made us different and we have different ideas and different understandings. But Lord, may we learn that we need to work for harmony. Because that's the way that things will get solved. And Lord, as we as we work our way through this virus, as we try and stay alert and use our common sense, Lord, we pray that there would be a closer working together. And all these different guidelines that are being sent out um, would, would give different organisations, different schools, different settings, um, well, guides, that people would be able to see a way, to navigate their way forward that is safe, that is protective, that is affirming. And we do pray for all those in positions of responsibility within companies and other organisations who, who are now trying to fathom out the best way forward. And we pray for families who are still trying to work out how they can meet with one another in a way that is most safe for them. continue to pray for our health service and for our care service, for our emergency service, for our teachers and teaching staff, and our shops and delivery people, and public transport operators, and utility workers post office and Royal Mail retailers and we pray for those who aren't able to open yet or even contemplate the possibilities of opening we pray that the government will continue to put in place sufficient funding and support that enables them to survive in this strange time. We pray for our places of worship as they too start to think about how they might prepare for the future. We particularly pray for Harlem and Bairnett. And Father, we pray for ourselves. commit this day to you. Lord, just, help, just help us to be aware of your presence with us. And point us in those opportunities where we might be able to pour a little bit of oil and bring about a greater sense of harmony for our words and our actions. Let's close with the Lord's Prayer as we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So if ever you find yourself in the Derbyshire Peaks, I would highly recommend a visit to Iron. It's got a lovely museum that tells the story. And the whole village has got a sort of sense of something special happened there. There's I've never been to any of the big war cemeteries, but I imagine that there's a, a similar feeling that you 
you're treading on some very sacred ground, some ground that you need to show respect to. So, have a, have a game to if you get a chance. And in the meantime, enjoy today. Look for blessings, bless others, and spread harmony in all that we do. See you soon. Bye.